Since 1982, the Courtright Centre for Conservation has been Ontario's premier environmental and renewable energy education and demonstration centre. In fact, the Courtright Centre is known as the Living City Campus because everything that happens here demonstrates how with the right technology, as well as respect and understanding of the natural world, we can have a sustainable lifestyle that not only enhances our lives, but that of the environment. The latest project here is a partnership between the Toronto Region Conservation Authority and the Matchbox Garden and Seed Company, which is a sustainable urban farm model called the Living City Farm. When food is grown locally to be consumed within our city region, we're using less fossil fuels and we're emitting less greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time, we're strengthening and diversifying our regional economies and we are providing more safe and secure access to fresh, local and healthy food. And as more and more prime agricultural land disappears, Small-scale urban farms will become essential in supplementing food for an increasingly urbanized population. As part of the TRCA's mandate to help develop sustainable communities, it created four signature urban agricultural projects that educate and foster a new generation of farmer plus allow them access to TRCA lands to hone their farming skills. If you look at our farmer succession rate in Ontario, it's very low. We have an aging population of farmers and not enough young farmers to replace them. So I think the more we support our new farmers, the more we make land available for new farmers and establish, help to establish them in their farming operations and endeavors, I think it would benefit everyone. Hannah Jacobs and Eric Rosencrantz are the co-owners of the Matchbox Garden and Seed Company and they have been working the farm here utilizing methods that maximize the use of the land so they can yield the highest volume of healthy organic food that they possibly can. The goal of all of our practices is that whatever we take away from the environment, the soil, we put back in. Uh, we use only organic uh, practices and we also employ uh, as many biodynamic uh, practices as possible. Biodynamic agriculture sees the farm as a kind of microcosm, a closed system that functions without the need for external resources. As in other forms of organic agriculture, artificial fertilizers and toxic herbicides and pesticides are strictly avoided. Instead, biodynamics employs methods that are dependent upon the interrelationships found in nature. When it comes to pest control, Hanna and Eric use ally and companion planting to protect their crops. The best way to explain an ally planting, uh, you have, for example, you have tomatoes and you plant marigolds with each tomato. And what that does is that marigold attracts an insect called a hoverfly. That hoverfly likes to eat aphids and aphid, aphids like to feed on tomatoes. So you bring the hoverfly to the tomatoes and then the hoverflies eat the aphids and we try to incorporate that kind of planting throughout the garden. It, it means it's a lot of work at planting time, but at the end of the day, what winds up happening is nature takes care of things for us. So we have, uh, if we see praying mantises, frogs, snakes in the garden, we encourage them to be there because they basically do the job for us. Although this farm encompasses 10 acres, this type of agriculture can be scaled down and still yield a viable amount of produce. People can produce a lot of food in their backyards uh, and if you don't know about it I suggest you just drive down Keel Street uh, and check out everybody's backyard in this neighborhood because they have fig trees and greenhouses and you know there are certain cultures and communities that already know about this so you can produce a lot of food. It's sort of funny I call a lot of these neighborhoods basically like a thousand acres of biodynamic intensive agroforestry uh, but it's just people's backyard gardens right? Yeah. You can feed a large amount of people um, farming using organic and sustainable techniques. Um, you can do that by um, producing a number of different kinds of crops. Um, and that as a farmer and, and being a farm, part of our role um, is conservationists. Um, the only way that you have healthy plants, healthy food, healthy farm is if you look at the farm as a whole and you treat the animals that are already there and the plants and the, and the insects. You have to incorporate all of that into your production. 
we hope that when people come to the farm that they learn this, um, that the more you incorporate what's happening naturally in the, in the environment, the better your garden can be. So TRC is in the process of constructing an energy efficient greenhouse on site this year and we're lo looking to demonstrate new sustainable technologies. So what we're interested in pursuing is a new technology called radiant root zone heating. It's uh, where the heat is concentrated or targeted towards the root zone area of a plant and it uses heat generated through a wood boiler system. The greenhouses will be heated using a wood-burning gasification unit similar to this one that heats the Shepherd House, headquarters of the Windfall Ecology Centre. Other plans for the site include renovating the historic barn as well as revitalizing the two-acre orchard. As we learn more about the negative impacts that mass agricultural farming can have on both our health and the environment, the idea of being able to grow our own food is both highly desirable and attainable, and there's a great satisfaction you'll receive knowing you've grown your own food or that it's been grown in your neighborhood. If you'd like to learn more about the Sustainable Living Farm here at the Courtright Centre for Conservation or the work of the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, you can visit our website for details. Mm -hmm.